So God says, Va'ato, and now, Hanichali, leave me be, Ve'echar api vahem, and let my wrath of my face rage out against them, Va'achalim, and devour them. Va'esa ois cholagagadol, I will make you a great nation. I will still keep my promise to Avraham, to Yitzhak, and to Yaakov, to have a great nation descended from them, and it will be you. Not all of Avraham's descendants, not all of Yitzhak's descendants became the Jewish people. Of course, Ishmael, Esau, and the other descendants did not become Jewish people. Also, not necessarily all the descendants of Jacob need to be Jewish people. You will be the one in whom I will keep that promise. I had priorly mentioned, but I'll, I'll mention it just very, very quickly now, that there is an issue of the B'nai Moshe, a belief that there is this mythical people descended from Moses. God offered Moses to make himself a special people. So that there are these mythical people who are the chosen among the chosen. That perhaps the Jews are the chosen people among the nations, and then there's chosen among the chosen, descendants from Moses, living across some mythical, some Batyon river. Um, again, that's something more for my exotic Jewish history lecture series, but it's based over here, in this little portion of the Torah right over here, where God says, I will make a great nation out of you. So, Vayichal Moshe es Pnei Adonai Lehav. Moshe began to address the presence, the face of Adonai, his God. And I'll notice over here, by the way, something really beautiful about Hebrew is that there's so much more to be seen in the original Hebrew of the language than there is to be seen in any translation, no matter how good. In my opinion, Arya Kaplan's translation of the Living Torah is the best translation available, but yet there's so much lost in any translation. For example, over here, as Moses begins to beg God to not murder all of the Jewish people, it says, Vayichal Moshe, Moshe began, Vav Yud Ches Lamed. Later on, when everything is finished and all is good and well, and, he's con and he has convinced God to let the Jews live, and things are going to be working out well, so Vayichal Moshe, Midabaritam, when Moshe finished speaking with them, Vav Yud Chaf Lamed, Vayichal, when he finished. Um, might seem like a cognate, or a homophon, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, homonym. Um, but in any case, there's a lot of rhythm and rhyme and poetry and underlying texts that don't only relate to uh, messages, don't only relate to the story itself or to some sort of moral message, but just the plain old sheer beauty that you can find within the original Hebrew text. And I recommend that everybody, therefore, become as proficient as possible in Hebrew, so as to be able to enjoy the Bible to be able to enjoy it, this beautiful book, uh, in the way that it is most appreciable. In any case, Vayichal Moshe Espenei Adonai Aleihav, Moshe began to address the face of Adonai as God, Vayomer, and he said, Lama Adonai Yechera Abcho Ba'amecha, Asher Otsay Samir Es Mitzrayim Bekoach God of Yer Chazaka. Why, God, will you be so wrathful with your people that you took out of the land of Egypt? You, not me, you, took out of the land of Egypt with such great strength Bekoach Godal Uvi Yod Chazaka and with a mighty hand. Lama Yomru Mitzrayim. Why should the Egyptians say, Lamor saying, Bira Hotziam, he took him out for evil. Laharogosam, to murder them, Bahorim, in the hill country. Ulachalosam Mealpneha Dama, and to end them from upon the face of the earth. Shuv Mecharona Pecha, Vinachim La Mecha. Return, God, please, from your, with the wrath of your nose, and be more gentle and comforted against the evil to your people. Literally translated. So that's Moses' first argument. What will Egypt say? Two notes. First of all, that earlier, way, way back in Exodus, we had a mention of Pharaoh saying, you shouldn't leave now. I know, Moshe, you keep saying that you want to leave and you want to go serve a Chag Adonai in the Midbar for three days, but don't. Ra keneged panechem, there is evil against your faces. And some commentators have pointed out, accurately, that Ra was a primary deity of Egypt at that time. And uh, Pharaoh might be saying, Ra is against you. If you leave, Ra will get you. And Moshe here might be saying, not that the Egyptians will say, ha 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 ha, Hashem didn't love them, but no, ha 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 ha, Ra ended up getting them, just as we knew Ra would. But it's also fascinating that Moshe's first argument is 
the one of Chil Hashem, Chilal Tem Shmi Bagoyim, God tells the Jewish people later on in the prophets, you, you, have, you have made my name desecrated among the nations. There's a mitzvah in the Torah to do a Kiddush Hashem, to sanctify God's name. And it is a sin to do a Chilul Hashem, to desecrate God's name. God has a reputation, and we Jews are seen as carrying that reputation for God, rightly or wrongly. I don't think we have shoulders broad enough for it. But in this case, Moshe is saying that you obviously care about other people, right? In other words, the idea that God only cares about Jews is an idea that does exist within Judaic tests, obviously, as uncomfortable as people might find that, or as um, magnificently as anti-Semites might find that. But it's obvious that God also cares about other people. In the story of Nineveh, where Jonah realizes that if the Ninevites repent, if he delivers his message and the Ninevites repent, then the Jews are going to be in serious trouble. So Jonah goes to sleep preparing for death. God says, you selfish man. So what if bad things happen to the Jews? Look how many people live in Nineveh. And look how many animals even live in Nineveh. You would have them all be destroyed because you couldn't carry out your mission to go tell them to repent? God cares about, well, we're his world. To think that God is, um, you know, only focused on the Jewish people and not on other people and not even upon other sentient beings is one that has some contradiction coming at it from the Bible, including, including right over here, where God plainly cares about his reputation among the Egyptians. Furthermore, Moses says, and uh, although it would seem that, that Moses, well, an interesting idea is that Moses... His reputation among the Egyptians, you have to understand, Moses was raised among them in Pharaoh's palace, and Moses subsequently was the one who would go there and say, hey, I'm representing God, we need to take them out to the, to the desert, and he was the one who was causing, well, it was through him that the, um, that, the, that the plagues were happening. He was warning about the plagues, some of them he caused, some of them Aaron caused, some of them God caused, but he was their conduit between Egypt and God. And uh, his reputation was on the line, Moses' reputation was on the line. So Moses might have overestimated how much God cared about the reputation, his own reputation among the Egyptians. Nonetheless, what ends up really succeeding in getting God to change his mind about wiping out the Jewish people and just making Moses into the rest of the Jewish people is the following. Zechor, la'avraham li'itzchak li'israel avadecha. Remember, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, you gave them their names. It was Avram, and you said Yitzchak. And it was Yaakov, and you said Yisrael. Remember, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, your servants, Hashem Nishbata Lehem Bach, that you swore to them by your own self. You didn't say hand to God, you are God. You swore to them by yourself. And you said to them, I will increase your children, your seed, your descendants, as many as the stars of the heaven. And this entire land, Asher Amarti, that I've spoken of, Eten Lizarachim, I'll give to your descendants, Benachalul Olam, and they shall inherit it, and they shall, it shall be their possession forever. This entire land referring to most likely the area from the Nile to the Euphrates, although there is a Talmud that refers to the entire planet, as eventually we consider the land of Israel. And and God therefore was comforted about the evil that he planned to do to the people. At this point,